I love Les Paul Juniors, especially the cheap ones. So when I had a chance to grab this white Maestro, you know I did. Unlike my other guitars, we're gonna modify it, but not with the standard P90. We're gonna change out this humbucker for an Alnico 8 high output humbucker for wire so we can split it. We're gonna replace the tuners. We're gonna replace the bridge with an adjustable bridge. We're gonna clean up the frets. We're gonna make this all nice and playable, replace the hardware, and we'll have a push pull in the tone pot to split the coil. Let's get started. Step number one, and no matter what Johnny says, disassemble. And hopefully I've got all the parts that I need to do this from start to finish without having to get up. Thank you, previous user, for putting the strings on correctly so they're not impossible to get off. I do appreciate that. And speaking of appreciation, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. It really helps me out. Okay, for ease of ease, I'm going to take the neck off and work with it. With the neck off, it's just going to be a whole bunch easier that way. Okay, neck is off. We're going to put that aside. Oh, it was shimmed. That's probably from the factory. It's a little piece of plywood or a little piece of veneer. So we'll remember that. We'll check it before we put it back together. If it needs a new shim, we'll put a new shim in. Now, I'm going to start by doing the tuners first. Tuners are the easiest thing to do. For your standard import tuners, all you need is a 10 millimeter wrench for the bolt. If you don't have one and you have a 3D printer, you can 3D print one. Easy peasy. And these are already pretty loose. So far in my collection, I have uh, two Epiphones, one original with the humbucker, one modified with the P90. I've got another Maestro that's not modified at all. I think it's right behind me. I've got a Gibson Baldwin that's uh, been modified with the P90. And now the white one. I'm going to call it the Billy Joe because, you know, white Billy Joe. You know what I'm talking about. If you don't know the history of the inexpensive Gibson copies, Epiphone, of course, is a registered Epiphone, of course, is an authorized uh, manufacturer for Gibson. They, they make Gibson models under the Epiphone brand usually imported and uh, some would argue of a lesser quality. I don't know if that's true. I've heard some argue that Epiphone is actually of better quality. For Maestro, these were made for sale in big box stores. So they are by far the most inexpensive of the Les Paul Juniors that fall under the Gibson umbrella. Okay, we have the tuners off. Before I put them on, I'm gonna give it a little clean. It's much easier to clean with the tuners off. Okay, for the replacement tuners, these were the most inexpensive ones I could find on Amazon. However, they are locking tuners, which I prefer on all my guitars. So like, I will put a link in the description for these and any other parts that I use in this build in the description below. Everything was purchased from Amazon and they will be affiliate links. So if you do click on them, I get a small percentage kickback. It costs you nothing. So I do appreciate if you use them. Okay, let's get this old hardware out of the way just to not be confused. On the floor was not what I had in mind. And these are three right, three left. So you gotta make sure you're putting them on the right place. And if you are purchasing aftermarket tuners, you can always try to match up the holes so that it's a drop-in replacement. So look at your old ones, look at your new ones. If it's an offset to the left, as most import tuners are, then you can just drop it right in, no problem. Hardware, and I'm gonna go ahead and put the sleeves on before I do anything else. I'm gonna put the washer on and then the sleeve. Just hand tighten to keep everything in place. Again, replacing tuners is a very, very easy job. If you're doing a drop-in replacement, the only tools you really need is a 10 millimeter and, and a small Phillips screwdriver, and you are good to go. And let's flip it back over. Just put the screws back in the original holes. And as long as they line up, life is good. Okay. 
Bang, zoom, perfect. So the holes will line up for this particular brand of tuners. So again, for your Maestro Les Paul Jr., these would be a drop-in replacement. And be extra careful when you're screwing in these screws. They're very small, they're easy to snap off. So again, be careful with that. Now you just tighten up the 10 mils. And I really love this uh, 10 millimeter socket that I printed. Works very well for this type of work. And you don't run the risk of uh, scratching up your headstock using a, a uh, standard wrench. Okay, that's it. Doesn't get much easier than that to replace the tuners on your Maestro or any guitar for that matter that already has important tuners. Just unscrew them, drop them in, and screw them back in place and you're done. And now we got some lockers, some locking tuners. Done with the headstock for now. Let's bring the body back up and we're gonna start by taking the back plate off so we can get to the electronics. And as you can see, The electronics on a Maestro are super cheap. Very, very small pots. We're gonna take these out just for the ease of working on. And the new bridge comes with new posts. Here's another tool that I printed on my 3D printer. This is a knob puller. Put it over top of your knob. Push that down to secure it. Pull the knob off. Oh no, these are tens. So you got tens on the old import pots. Now with, with uh, new tuners and new pots, sometimes the import holes are smaller than the standard holes and you'll have to ream them out. Not difficult, but you will need a reamer. If we have to do that, I'll show you how. So I'm coming out, coming out, and I'm keeping nothing. Goodbye, old electronics. Now let's work on getting the pickup out. Four screws holds the humbucker in. And I'm going to set those aside just in case the new one is missing screws. But that's it. You pull it out. And that there is the ground wire that's going to these so that you're grounded out on the strings. Now we have our LP Junior, devoid of all electronics. Let's start doing it. Hey, I believe this is the pickup that I chose. Again, it's an Alnico 8. Black is hot, green bare is ground, and red white is for accessory. Thank you, Tony. Well, thank you, Tony. I appreciate that. Now, I am going to need the mounting ring from the old one. Okay, the new one did come with springs and screws, and you can see it's labeled Alnico 8. And now begins the fun. If you've never done this before, you got to wrangle the spring while you're playing with the humbucker. It's really not too bad. It's kind of... Get it in place where you want it to go, hold it there, and I just put the screwdriver to it. And just repeat for the other side. And easy peasy, you got a humbucker and a pickup cover. Now just kind of twist your wires together so they're one piece. They will go through that hole much easier. You can just continue to push that through and put the screws back in the pickup rings. And our pickup is secured. And if you're not happy with the levelness of it, a piece of foam underneath there can help you out. So my tone pot is going to be a push-pull to do the split. And now I just want to check the holes to make sure that they're proper. And that one's too big. This is when a reamer comes into play. And this is a little reamer that I bought off Amazon. And take it slow. Perfect. Now this is my wiring diagram. I printed this off of guitarelectronics.com. Big shout out to them. They have tons of wiring diagrams that are super useful. In most humbuckers that are four wire, the red and the white are the ones that control the split. There are two pickups, two single coil pickups in a humbucker, and they are wired up in series. Now there's also mods you can do to do a push pull or a switch to wire them up in parallel or series to get a different tone. Series is the much fuller humbucker tone. When you disconnect this or send it to ground, it will only send the signal through the south pole. So you have a single coil at that point. 
Okay, so this is going to be my tone pot. In order for the split to work, I got to solder the red and white both to the center lug. This bottom lug is going to go to ground, and this just has to go on one of the center lugs. We got the red and the white soldered in there, so let's get a short wire and do the grounding. Yeah, you got it soldered there. So my soldering for the lugs on the switch are done. The center is going to go to the center of the volume pot. I'm wiring it backwards from the diagram, so I have to stop and think about it for a moment. There we go. Let's get that one soldered on. Okay, done with that. Okay, this is my tone pot, so it's going to have the capacitor. Okay, my tone pot now has the cap on it. I'm going to go to the center lug. I'm going to try to heat it and push it through that old solder. God, it's too early in the morning for this. Now everything that needs to be attached to the tone pot is indeed attached to the tone pot. And that's all that goes on the volume pot, with the exception of the ground. Typically, you can just take a pair of pliers and bend that up until it touches the... And then just get a little bead of solder there to keep that in place. All right, that's tacked on. And that's all that goes on that pot, so I can go ahead and attach it. And everything else is going to go to ground. All I got to do is get this pot in the hole. Oh, this is going to be a tight one. This shaft is really too short, but I got it on. Now, from this point on, everything should just be to ground. I always find soldering the grounds the hardest because you're you're soldering directly to a pot which has a lot of surface area, so that it uh, absorbs a lot of your heat. That's soldered on. Okay, so I'm gonna have to solder a ground to that and a ground to that. Now the two pots are grounded together, and that should be the end of this, just to tuck everything back in. So in the next segment, I'm going to put the neck back on, and we are going to start setting this guitar up. All right, so the Maestro is all set up. If you recall, there was a shim in the neck and I did have to put another one in there. I don't know if you can see that, but there is a lot of shimmage in that neck pocket now. So the, so the single coil is definitely pronounced. Uh, it's a little chimier than the full humbucker. The Maestro turned out pretty good. I like the new tuners, easy to set up, they keep tuned pretty well. I left the plastic nut on, but I may replace that in the future. The uh, frets are all nice and level and cleaned and polished perfectly. And it takes distortion really well, of course. <laughs> Thank you.
Maestro with new tuners, cleaned up, new bridge, new pickup with a coil split, all new electronics, full size, everything looking good. So this has been another episode featuring a used Maestro coming back to life. Thank you very much for tuning in today and watching the video to the end. I do appreciate it. If you haven't, take a moment to like the video if you liked it. Give it a thumbs down if you didn't like it. Take a moment to subscribe to the channel. I do appreciate that. There will be links in the description for all the parts I used on this maestro. And I want to thank you again for watching. Until next time, take care of yourself. Enjoy your gear. Peace. <laughs>